Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a project to share with you today. We are in the middle of our bird unit study and I have this book called Robins, How They Grow Up by Eileen Christilo and it has been a fabulous addition to this unit. It's a gorgeous picture book and it is a living book which means that it is super engaging, has wonderful information and it is the inspiration for today's project. I have my Fabriano 140 pound watercolor paper. This is a heavier watercolor paper than I normally use. I'm so glad I'm upgrading to this paper because it has worked really well with our projects. I've got my Caterpillar Pro and I'm going to trim down this paper in half and then in half again so that my cards are four and a half inches by six inches. Next, I'm going to tape them down onto my painting board, and this is optional, but it does keep all of your cards in place. Once I have all eight cards in place, I'm going to pull my Distress inks. These are ink pads that I'm going to be using as watercolors. I love the range of colors. I have got my little non-porous surface here that I'm just going to squish down these ink pads onto that surface, and it's going to give me just enough watercolor to work for this project. For this project, I am also using some paint brushes. These are from a local craft store. They're not that fancy at all, but they have worked really well for many years and I'm really pleased to have them. So now I'm just going to try to decide how to do this artwork. I have to admit that I often struggle with the artwork, but having these gorgeous illustrations to copy has made it so much easier. So if you are unsure about your artistic talents, I highly recommend you using some beautiful artwork that you feel confident that you can copy. Because when you are copying something, I find that it is a lot easier than working with a blank piece of paper and trying to come up with something on your own. Even if you are not typically artistic, you can definitely modify these images so that they suit your artistic talents. All right, so this is the first card that I've got done. I've labeled it nesting, and these are going to be uh, the way that we represent the learning for this book. And so you can do all kinds of different learning uh, projects when you are doing a unit study. But for this unit, I found that we ended up doing a lot of trivia based cards with artwork on the front. And this was mainly inspired by the Professor Noggins trivia card game, which we really love, including with all of our unit studies, if a card set complements that unit. We decided to make our own for this unit and it ended up being such a success that with the rest of the projects that we did with this unit, I decided to add a few trivia cards to add to our stack of trivia cards. So the way that we typically do this is that we'll do some artwork on the front and generally the artwork is inspired by some of the books that we read since we're not super talented in the sense of coming up with our own artwork, but if we're copying something else, then that's pretty achievable. Then on the flip side, which I will show you later on in this video, we can we came up with some questions, some trivia-based questions. Now you could do the same thing, come up with some trivia-based questions, or for this project, you can do one of two things. You can use them for narrating what you have learned or some dictation. If you wanted to dictate some content to your child, then your child could write them on the back of the card, or you can use them for nature journaling take these cards out into nature and you could write a couple of notes if you are going out bird watching or if this is for another unit where you are learning about trees or botany or or any other topic you can take these cards out into nature and you can use them for journaling so there are a couple of different ways that you can utilize this project to fit your unit study Okay, so I have used a variety of Distress inks for this project. You can find all of the colors that I have used at the blog post that accompanies this unit. Uh, there's also links to the book as well as the watercolor paper. I want to say something about the watercolor paper. We typically use 90 pound watercolor paper by the same company, Fabriano. And we really, really enjoy that watercolor paper. But recently I decided to try some of the other papers that they carry. They have hot press and cold press watercolor paper as well as 90 pound and 140 pound. 
What I like about this watercolor paper is that it has a nice textured finish. It is the cold press watercolor paper. Also, I'm really enjoying using their heavier paper. This is 140 pound. And for these little cards, it works out really well because we want to be able to use these cards in our homeschool often. And since they're going to be used and handled, uh, having the heavier watercolor paper, I think is working out much better. If it's going to be enclosed in a main lesson book or in a binder, then I think using the lighter weight watercolor paper I think is fine. Now with the 140 pound watercolor paper, you can use it for wet on wet watercoloring. Now we're not doing wet on wet watercoloring, but when you have a higher quality watercolor paper, it makes it a lot easier to erase mistakes by going over the same area with some water and lifting the color. If you're using a lesser quality watercolor paper or a lightweight watercolor paper, when you begin to do that, you're going to start to tear away at the paper. Now the last thing is that we are going to laminate these cards and so using a lighter weight watercolor paper is going to be fine because once you laminate them that's going to make them durable and last longer and not be so prone to wear and tear and, and breaking. Now this is the final project we're doing for our bird unit study and by this point in a unit study generally my children are a little bit worn out with the unit and not super interested in doing a lot of written work or even artistic work to depict the learning that we've done for a unit. When we get to this point in a unit and I'm really motivated to finish strongly, what I'll do is I'll simplify the projects that we're doing. So while this is a book that we read together with my eight-year-old and my 12-year-old, neither of them chose to do this project and I was okay with it because the content that I am creating is something that they'll still be able to use and enjoy, but I'm not required requiring them to do any written work for this project. If I still wanted them to do some written work, what we might do is turn this project into a group project. So I might do the artwork and they might do the writing, or they might do the artwork and I would do the writing, or in some cases, I might do the artwork and have and dictate what the writing would be for the backside or in this case since these are trivia questions I went ahead and I did the trivia questions but we will play this game as a family so that still my children are participating in this project in a more um, passive way rather than an active way in doing their own cards so Whatever project I have in mind for my children, I always try to keep in mind one main goal that I want to achieve for the project. And in this case, I was really inspired by the artwork in the book and I really wanted to make some trivia cards based on this book. And because I received this book at the very end of our unit, this project is coming at the end of our unit when my kids are a little bit worn out. However, had we done this project at the very beginning of our unit, I know that we would have all done the same trivia cards or nature journal journaling cards. Okay, so I'm done with my final card here and it's time to remove the tape from the cards and I actually ended up tearing the cards a little bit by accident. This tape is super strong. So you could also use washi tape if you didn't need to have it stuck down to your painting board quite as much as we did, especially since this wasn't a wet on wet water coloring project. Okay, so now it's time to do the trivia questions and this took a little bit of effort. Now, all of these cards have been photographed. They're on the blog post that accompanies this video and you can copy the same questions or you can make up your own questions. If you find any errors with the questions that I've done, please contact me, I'd love to correct those. Uh, I did the best that I could with the resources that we had. Uh, sometimes mistakes do happen. Okay, so this is basically the process where I am just writing out some true and false questions and some multiple choice questions. Be sure to add the answers to the bottom of your card. I'm going to laminate these using my Black & Decker laminating sheets. These are 5 mil sheets. This is a really good weight laminating sheet. I am also using my Mink machine. This is a scrapbooking foiling machine that can laminate as well. Uh, this is a pricier laminate machine, so I recommend that you just get the standard laminate machines unless you are a scrapbooking enthusiast. 
Okay, so once those are out, I am going to use my Cutter Pillar Pro to trim down these cards. I don't typically laminate in our homeschool, but I'm really glad that I did with these cards because I really want to protect the artwork, especially since we're going to be using them as trivia cards. It's best that they are protected versus being contained in a main lesson book, in which case I would not laminate them. So here's just a closer look at each of these cards. I really, really love the way the artwork turned out. And I'm really glad that I taped these down because I really like the white border alongside each of these cards. Kind of gives it a nice finished look. So I hope that you try this project. If you do, be sure to share pictures with me on Instagram. I love to see what you guys are up to in your homeschool. Now, if you want to get more information about this project, you can find a link down in the description box below. It will take you to the blog post that accompanies this video. And if you want to see what our homeschool looks like on a daily basis, don't forget that you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.